Welcome back. Today's headlines of CCTV's news bulletin are Chemcon the Americas 2016's welcome reception, an interview on Brazil, and to start with, some questions and answers from yesterday's seminar on the Lautenberg Act. You've been engaged in some important discussions with your colleagues here in Canada uh, in the Regulatory Cooperation Council. Can you provide some comment on what you've learned in that process so far and how that might influence TSCA implementation? First of all, just in the area of prioritization, I think we have a lot to learn from our Canadian colleagues. I mean, and, and that's one starting point as we, you know, as we move forward uh, once the active inventory is set and we look to go from there to to uh, pursuing prioritization. The other is in the chemical evaluation space. We've been working through the Regulatory Coordination Council to begin identifying common sets of uh, chemical assessment issues that we face in, with a mind or goal toward so looking for ways that we can be consistent within North America on chemical evaluation. I think we're ready to talk about the next step and see how we can't um, move toward perhaps eventually collaborating on risk assessments and, 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 and not only sharing resources, but making sure there's more regulatory certainty on the existing chemical side um, in North America. Time to see which Toronto treasure our local reporter likes to highlight today. Hello, Karen. Where are you? Hi, Cheered. Do you hear that thunderous roar? Believe it or not, I'm here behind the Niagara Falls. The journey behind the falls is a year-round attraction that is very popular, as you can see from the masses around me. And they're here to take in the beautiful view that awaits them. From this observation deck, the view is spectacular. Look at that rushing water. The Niagara Falls are shared by our friends on both the American and Canadian side of the border. The rainbow bridge you see in the distance is a symbol of friendship connecting Canada and the United States of America. But before I share more information about this incredible location, please have a look at my impressions of the welcome reception. I'm currently on my way to the welcome reception using this underground maze of walkways below the city of Toronto called The Path. According to Guinness World Records, this underground network of walking paths is the largest underground shopping complex in the world with about 370,000 square meters or about 4 million square feet of retail space. The path connects most of the major downtown office towers, neighborhoods, and subway stations in the downtown city core. The path includes the Intercontinental Toronto Centre, site of ChemCon the Americas 2016, and the welcome reception where, just like the path, delegates were able to connect and reconnect with friends and colleagues. On the same premises as yesterday's welcome reception, we will host the exhibition of Chemcon the Americas 2016. Special feature this year is that at each exhibition booth you will receive a sticker that will complement our 20th anniversary overview. Collect all the stickers and enter our prize draw with many prizes, from Chemcon goodies to special exhibitor prizes. Nice prizes, including tickets to the CN Tower. Unfortunately, no tickets to a tropical beach in Brazil, but nevertheless we will take you to Brazil in today's interview. Part of SICOM recommends actions to be undertaken by countries for a policy framework to foster the sound management of chemicals. And that's what's currently happening in Brazil. Alberto, can you share a little bit what's happening? Since uh, two years ago, we started looking for some experience, some legislations, some regulations in other countries and in other regions, and start to develop this, this legislation. We established a working group on the National Commission on um, Chemical Safety and with a multi-sectorial um, stakeholders from the industry, the NGOs and different sectors in the government. The main principles are uh, to not to reinvent the wheel, to use all the available information. Okay, Michael, do you see similar developments in other South American countries? 
in terms of the regulation. Yeah. Uh, we're seeing a lot of development in terms of chemical regulation in South America just in general. So, for example, in Brazil with food contact legislation and, and biocide legislation. But a lot of other countries especially are considering adopting GHS and very specific standards for their region. So, for example, agricultural laws that maybe didn't exist before. So, yes. There are criteria for flecking chemicals for further review. Uh, this, of course, is not new. Eh? You see that happening all over the world. Do you take what happens all over the world into account? We are going to, to, to use, as I, uh, I am saying, the, the available information, um, hazard assessment and uh, risk assessment. We, th that's our uh, thought. And we are going to, to try to establish some cooperation, some uh, regulatory cooperation. One of the things I was really impressed with as part of the development process in Brazil for the regulation as I was following it is how cooperative it was. How were you able to do that? I can say that we divide the problem in two. Firstly, we work uh, mainly with the Brazilian Industrial Chemical Association. So it was, uh, I can see, easier to have a common agreement with, uh, firstly with them. But we receive a lot of um, comments on the, on the draft legislation. We are going to look at uh, some specific points uh, raised by different sectors to, to try to have an agreement. At the beginning of the next year, we expect it to, to conclude and, and to send it to the, to the Congress. You can watch the complete interview on our YouTube channel. After this interview on Brazil, it's time for Karen to educate us on the Niagara Falls. I'm on the Hornblower, a state-of-the-art open-air catamaran capable of transporting 700 passengers up close and personal into the Niagara Gorge area. This boat will bring us up close and personal with the three regions that collectively make up the so-called Niagara Falls. The American Falls, the Bridal Veil Falls, and the Horseshoe Falls, sometimes called the Canadian Falls by those on American soil because they can't really get a good view of the Horseshoe Falls unless they come over to the Canadian side of the Niagara River by traveling over the Rainbow Bridge by foot or by car. For those who don't have a passport to come into Canada, they can board their own Maid of the Mist, a similar catamaran boat that travels from the U.S. side of the Niagara River to see this fantastic view for themselves. Niagara Falls is a very famous waterfall in North America and this unique and beautiful area boasts about being the honeymoon capital of the world. Nowadays, the city of Niagara Falls hosts about 50,000 honeymooning couples a year. Although it only ranks ninth in the list of the world's largest falls, it ranks number one if you look at the volume of water traveling over it. At its peak flow rate, there are about 270 million liters of water that go over the falls every minute. That's about 6 million bathtubs of water every minute. Refreshing. Definitely a must-go destination. Time for our statement of the day. Michael, have you ever been to the Niagara Falls? Uh, I'm the only one in my family who has not been to Niagara Falls, and I'm really looking forward to doing it someday. Yeah, now you might have been inspired by the local reporter part. Um, you probably have recognized him already. This is uh, Michael Boucher from uh, Dentons. Uh, Michael was already involved in our first Camp Con the Americas and we're happy to have you here at our fifth anniversary. I'm excited to be back and looking forward to a great event. Michael, at Dentons you are a partner where you lead the uh, chemical pesticides and consumer product regulation team. Um, in that role you closely follow all developments uh, um, and implementation of federal and state laws uh, to chemicals. Uh, Several states, like for instance California, uh, they have their own roles. They're very proactive with their own regulations for chemicals. Will they be impacted uh, by the uh, uh, Loudermark Act? Uh, well, during the negotiation of the law, uh, the relationship between the new Tosca and state laws was uh, discussed uh, heavily and uh, special uh, provisions were made to ensure that states could remain active uh, in the regulation of chemicals under specific circumstances. Uh, some laws, like California, California's Proposition 65, uh, were protected uh, and will not be affected at all. Other laws uh, may be affected on a case-by-case -case basis, but I think we will continue to see states being active in regulating chemicals under the new TSCA. And your statement is? Uh, my statement is that uh, states uh, should actively regulate chemicals when EPA has not acted. 
Please let us know what you think about it. Um, Michael, thank you very much for being here and for your support. You're welcome. The forecast for our first conference day of Chemcom the Americas 2016 features the Americas with Canada, US, Mexico, Brazil and many more countries in Middle and South America, including nanomaterials, a lot to cover in the morning sessions. In the afternoon, a roundtable on enforcement from Europe to North America to China. Furthermore, a presentation on the potential impact of Brexit on the chemical industry and our grand finale of today, a global approach to new chemicals, polymers, biocides and endocrine disruptors. Thank you very much for watching and enjoy your day. <laughs>